All right, so for this game, we have what is essentially just a straight grouping game. Um, we have these three families, the Trents, Williamses, and the Yandels. And apparently they're just gonna own a bunch of properties within this village. Um, the five properties we have are F, G, I, M, S. And from there, um, I guess one thing to clarify is that each of these properties is only gonna be owned by exactly one of these three families. So that means that we do have kind of a straight one-to-many game, nothing really too exciting. Um, and they do also tell us that every single family owns at least one building. So everybody has at least one. So three spaces are already accounted for. That means that there's two extra spaces that will float around. So I guess we could do a two, two, one split, or we can do a three, one, one split. There's only two different ways this is gonna go. Anyways, the rules. So the first rule says W or the Williamses had to own more than the Andels. So that means that if W has to have more than Y, then W is gonna have at least two. And in fact, Y, um, they can only really have one then, right? Because if these guys picked up two, then these guys would have to have three and that would leave nothing for the Trents, right? Because that would already push you to five. So that's pretty good. We can say that these guys are only gonna have one building there. Um, and then in terms of the spacing distribution, you could have, I guess, these guys could still have three, one, one, or you can do two, two, and one. Next, neither the inn nor the mill belong to the owner of the forge. So I suppose the forge cannot be with the inn and the forge cannot be with the mill. So, all right, that's good. So F is kind of limited here. Next, either the Trents own the stable oof, or the Ys own the end. So we have to have either, either the stable goes to the Trents or the in goes to the Ys um, or both, in fact, but at least one of these has to happen. Except if it's, if it's this guy, then that's gonna lock this completely, which is kind of nice. Um, but then even if this is locked, F could still go here, for example, with, with the S. We're gonna have a little bit of flexibility. Um, and if this happens, if we have S going to T, then that doesn't really tell us too much, does it? Okay, you know what, yeah, let's, let's see what we can do with what we have. So the questions themselves. Question 14 says, what could be a complete setup of the game? So as usual, we go by the rules. First rule, W has to have more than Y. So A looks good, B looks good, C looks good. D does not, we have W with just one. And E looks, oh, also not so much because they have the same number. So D and E are both out. Cool. Next, F can't be with I or M. Let's see if anything violates that. Answer choice A looks fine, B looks fine, C has F with M. Not cool, we can get rid of that. Lastly, we have to have S, T, or we have to have I, Y. So A has S with T, so we're good. B does not have S with T and does not have I with Y. So we can get rid of answer choice B. And that leaves us with A as the best answer to question number 14. As usual, let's plug that into the board. So answer choice A says GS, followed by IM, followed by F. Next, first local question we have is number 16. If the Yandels picked up the mill, so if M goes here, so right away, this locks out the Y's, which is great, um, which means that this rule also has not been accommodated. This is not happening, which means S is going to go to the Trents. And then from there, what do we have? We know that the Williamses are going to have to have two things, but I and F are still in play. So since they can't be together and Y is done, that means that I and F are going to have to flip between these two. And so what's left, the G is going to have to go over here for sure, because these guys need at least one more. So I guess we're good, let's take a look. The question asks, um, what must be true? Trends pick up the forge, not necessarily. Um, Trends pick up the inn, we don't know that. Williams has picked up the forge, we don't know that. Williams take the granary and there it is. Best answer to question 16 is D. Next, number 17 is our next local, which says if one of the families picked up the G and the I. So if we have to have a GI block here. I suppose, what does that tell us? Obviously it's not gonna go here. Oh, wait a minute, so if it's not gonna go here because Y can only have one building owned, that means that we're not gonna meet this rule. The I, Y is not happening, so S and T will have to happen. So this 
takes care of that, which means now the GI block can't really go here because we can never really have three things under the trends um, since three here would add up with two here and one there. That's not that's too many things. Um, so the GI block has to go to the Williamses. So that takes care of that. And now we're just left with F and M, one of which will definitely go here. I guess we just don't know which one. That could still go either way. And the other of which can go wherever. So the question, oh wait, no, not wherever. We know that I and F don't play nice. So definitely not F over here, but it could still be an M over there. So anyways, the question itself now asks what could be true. Trends get the greatery. Nope, that's already accounted for. Trends get the mill. And maybe, yeah, the mill could potentially go here as long as this is F. That seems okay. Just in case, let's take a look at the rest. W gets the forge. And no, that's the one thing that cannot happen right now. Answer choice D, W gets the stable. Nope, that goes to the trends. And the Yandels get the in. Nope, uh, they do not get the in. Best answer here is answer choice B for question 17. Next, number 18. If the trends own exactly one of the buildings, so that's pretty good because it sets up spacing. We know that if these guys get exactly one, and we already know that these guys also already have exactly one, that means that the Williamses are getting exactly three of the buildings. Now, in terms of the distribution though, I mean, arguably these guys could still pick up F. F is especially antisocial in this game, but still we could do F, G, and S. And then this guy could have I, and then that would take care of this rule. So I'm not sure what really we could do. Let's see. Maybe this is enough information. The question asks, um, what is a complete and accurate list of the buildings, any of which could be Trent's building? So what could potentially go over here? Um, and it seems like almost anything, no? Um, I mean, the forge, for example, if we put the forge over here, that would take oh, take care of our most restrictive components. So then we just put the I over there, and then everybody else would happily go in here. So the forge seems like an easy pickup. We can get rid of answer choice C. We definitely know that the forge could have gone there. Um, outside of the forge, I mean, let's just go down the line. I mean, we could try to resolve this. If we put an S over here, then we could put the forge over here since this rule is taken care of and that would otherwise take care of our most, most restricted element. And then everybody else would just happily go in here. So S seemingly could also be that building. So that would get rid of, oh, nice. Answer choices A and B. Oh, and D, that's convenient. Um, so yeah, there it is. And apparently the mill also could go here. Let's just actually double check that. If we put the mill over here, then I suppose I would have to go over here. And then, yeah, I guess at that point, we've resolved both I and M, and that would just be F, G, and S in there. That could also work. So onwards. The one global question we had, number 15, which of the following is a pair of buildings that cannot both be owned by the trends? Okay, let's take a look. Answer choice A, could they have both F and G? And maybe that seems safe enough because if we give the trends F and G again, that would take care of the F who's the most restricted. I could still go over here and then whoever's left, there's no restriction. So why couldn't they go to W? That seems fairly safe. Answer choice B, could we have G and M under the trends? And ooh, that might run into trouble. If we put G and M here, Again, I, in order to accommodate this, this is going to have to be an I, but then who are we left? We're left with, oh no, F and S. Actually, yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine. F and S could then go here together. Not a problem. Answer choice C, could we do G and S? And that we've actually seen explicitly, so that easily could have happened. Answer choice D, could we do I and M under the trends? Now, if we do I and M over here, that's... Oh yeah, that's going to break for sure, because then I can't go to the Andels, but S is not going to the Trents either, so that would break. So answer choice D cannot work. Just in case, though, let's take a look at answer choice E. Could we have I and S under the Trents? And this one, we've seen the opportunity right there, so that easily could have happened. Um, so once again, best answer to question 15 was D.